Welcome to the Force Multiplier Podcast, where we talk about tactical business strategies, building high-performance sales teams, and growing your business. If you're ready to break free from the status quo and join the ranks of the Mavericks, the Rebels, and the Renegades, who refuse to conform and instead build multi-million dollar businesses, then buckle up, because here we go. And welcome back to the next episode of the Dropout Multi-Millionaire Podcast. Once again, I am your host, Brian Will. This podcast is based on my best-selling book, The Dropout Multi-Millionaire. And now my new book, which is called No, The Psychology of Sales and Negotiation. This is a good one. Today is the third show in this series around that new book. And today we are going to be talking about objections. If you have been in sales for any period of time, you have probably learned a few things about objections and specifically probably how to overcome them. If you use a script, you probably have an entire section in that script about those objections. The problem that I have found with most scripts is that they address the objections in the wrong part of the sales process. They do it at the end and in the follow-up. If you're trying to handle objections at that point, you are fighting an uphill battle. The real key to overcoming objections is to do it before the client has them. If you can learn to do that, your close rate will skyrocket. Now, the key to doing this is being very methodical in understanding your product and your sales process. You need to get serious about your sales. Whatever it is you sell, I am guessing you get the same basic objections in every sale you make. And in fact, you probably even know what those objections are. I have found there are primarily four to five, no matter what the product or the process is. So once you have established what those baselines objections are, the key here is to build a sales script and a process around overcoming those objections during the initial introduction and fact-finding phase of the sale. This is something that I do with companies that I consult for, and our objection, our objective going in is to increase the close rate of the sales team, increase the ROI on the marketing dollar spent, and honestly, depending on the size of the sales force, we will probably do that with less people, but that's another episode. So here's how this works. Here's what I'm talking about. The first thing we do is we study the process. The second thing we do is we find the common objections. And third, we craft a script and process around overcoming those objections before we ever get to the presentation or the close phase of the sales cycle. Okay. We then teach that, we practice it, we enforce it with the team. We follow up with the team to make sure they're staying on those methods. And then honestly, we drop anybody on that team who can't listen and can't learn. The people that stay, we just keep retraining constantly over and over and over to keep them on track. Okay, so I've said this and you're like, okay, so what are all these objections? Well, here's the first one we teach. And this is the one that most people miss. Uh, miss. So the first objection you have, and this is true for pretty much anyone, you ready? The first objection is that you are a salesperson and people generally don't like you, okay? It's not so much they don't like you personally. You might be a great guy. You might teach their kids in Little League on the weekends. But when you put on your sales hat, people no longer trust you, okay? And if they don't trust you, what happens is they get defensive as soon as you start talking. And you need to understand those issues. You need to understand the first thing they think you're going to try to do is you're going to try to sell them something and nobody wants to be sold, right? The second thing they think is they're afraid of the unknown. They don't know what you're about to do next. They don't know what is about to happen. And they're afraid that you might have some slick sales line or slick ploy that's going to get them to buy something that they don't want. So mentally, they are getting ready to fight back against you and your sales tactics, so to speak. They're afraid of getting a bad deal. That's just, that's just the way it works. So you need to understand this going into the sales process. There is going to be a wall between you and your client. It's what we call a defensive wall of mistrust. Okay. An example I always use to make this simple is car sales. And it's, I use it because it's very clear and everybody's done this, right? Have you ever been to a dealership to buy a new car? And when the salesperson is out there lot stalking you, lot stalking, I love that word. It's where they're like walking around the lot, eyeballing you, and you're looking over at them and they're looking at you and you're just waiting for them to head your direction, right? 
That's a lot of stalking. And eventually they start coming at you. Now, do you trust them? Do you think that that salesperson is coming over there to give you the absolute best deal possible? Do you think that they are looking out for your best interests or are they looking out for theirs and the dealerships? Or are you as a consumer automatically on guard when you see them coming? You have to remember in sales that if that's the way you think about salespeople, that's also the way your clients are seeing you. Okay. And that's a key. I love asking salespeople, how would you react if a salesperson did to you what you are now trying to do to them? And if you wouldn't react well, then you automatically know they are probably not going to react well either. All right. So the first objection, people don't like salespeople. Okay. They're afraid of them. They're afraid of the unknown and they're afraid of getting sold. So your first goal before you even get started in, in pitching your product or doing your presentation, your very first goal is to figure out hey, how to get that defensive wall of mistrust down. You need to begin to establish some kind of trust because if you don't, you're going to be fighting to climb over that wall the entire time, right? So when I train sales forces, this is what we do. We, we do this by establishing what we call a trust basis at the beginning of the conversation, okay? And we do that by setting them at ease. We call it a set at ease statement. And we then explain to them exactly what we are about to do. And then finally, we use a positive statement to get them to relax, okay? So I said a lot of uh, gobbledygook there, but here's what I'm, and I'm gonna paraphrase an example of what I'm talking about, right? If you were a customer, I would say, listen, Mr. Customer, I understand you're looking for my product. Okay. So let me tell you what I'd like to do. In, in order for us to move forward, I need to ask you some questions. Okay. And based on the answers to those questions, we can make a determination on if what I have will even work for what you're looking for. Now, if it does, what I'll do is I'll make a couple recommendations. I'll give you some pricing options, and then I'm going to let you decide if you'd like to move forward, okay? And now here's the key phrase. This one's the freaking magic right here. I say, is that fair enough? That's my transition statement. Is that fair enough? In that short intro, you recognize the fear of the unknown. And so you told them what was gonna happen, right? You recognize the fear of being sold. And so you told them that you would make a recommendation, but let them decide. You told them exactly what was gonna happen in this process from questions to recommendation, to pricing, to allowing them to make a decision. You establish that you're going to look out for their best interests by giving them these options and then letting them decide if it works. And then you got a positive statement from them to proceed. You took away the fear, no pushy sales tactics. They get to decide, is that fair enough? Now listen, that seems very simple, but I promise you, if you will use that, set at ease, your sales process will be so much smoother all around and your close rates will go up, okay? That's one example of what we teach in our mastermind and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's it for today. If you wanna learn more, you can get copies of both my books, The Dropout Multimillionaire and Know, Psychology of Sales and Negotiation. You can look me up at www.brianwillmedia.com. Everything is there, books, podcasts, blogs. And finally, if you really want to learn about in-depth tactical business strategies and creating high-performance sales teams, come to the website, drop me a note so I can send you some information on our Force Multiplier Mastermind and the one-on-one -on -one business coaching programs. My coaching is very tactical in nature, no theory, no fluff. This is where we break down your business and your sales process, and we show how to make it and you better. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you would like to get more information on either of my books, joining the Force Multiplier Mastermind or my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, you can find me at www.brianwillmedia.com.